Hello and welcome to Audiobook Reviews. This review is on Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I will note this is indeed the book and not the Amazon TV show. I will say right off the bat, though, if you saw the show and liked it, definitely read the book. If you read the book and didn't see the show, definitely watch the show. Both are really good. It was actually a incredibly good adaptation after now reading the book. Uh, I did see the show first, which made me most certainly want to read the book. And I am quite glad that I did. I'm going to do this review a little bit different. I'm not going to get into any spoilers. I'm just going to kind of go over the synopsis of the book and talk a little bit more details about things that I really did enjoy about it. Um, and so to start things off, Good Omens essentially is about the apocalypse. And the, the two main characters we follow, one an angel, one a demon, both sent to Earth to essentially fight for their sides, to either help people do good, help people do evil. And then after thousands of years of this going on, they get to know each other. They become basically friends, even though that, of course, would not be allowed, but they, they kind of do it anyway. When they find out that the Antichrist is born, is being put on Earth to start everything into place for the apocalypse. So that's kind of the, the base plot. Now, this book is incredibly British humor. So while not necessarily being for everyone, uh, it, there's just so much in there. I do like British humor, so it was especially good to me. But I think even if you're not a huge fan, there is just so much to like about the book. The way that it's written, and I haven't read a lot of either author. I'm more familiar with Pratchett. And I've read a few Discworld novels here and there. Um, it definitely does scream Pratchett, but with just more into it as well. Uh, from reading a little bit, some of the interviews and pieces at the end, it sounds like they did kind of work together. Pratchett did a lot more of the actual writing, but the ideas were very combined. But there is so much going on in this book, and it's kind of like if you're watching a television show, and there might be 10 jokes going on kind of behind the scenes that you barely even notice unless you're paying attention. It's almost like the novelization of something like that. It's almost everything. There is there is a plot, and it's, it's a good plot. Don't get me wrong. But there's just the constant jokes, little things, the way things are written. There's something that's just so perfect uh, about the writing style. And I want to read a really quick passage. There are no spoilers with this. It's actually ultimately not at all important to the story. It's just kind of an aside. Um, also, before I get into this, I will note the book does have uh, footnotes all throughout. And this was, it, it's interesting reading the footnotes. I actually don't mind them because it's usually for some sort of cutaway joke or other piece. And it adds something really different that you don't get often. The only other book I can think of off the top of my head that uses a lot of footnotes is The Count of Monte Cristo, except that book is usually it's explaining French history and uh, different things, describing things. This is it's used very, very differently here. So this passage I'm going to read really quickly is talking about basically a, a newspaper or a magazine and uh, is mentioned here. It says, a typical National World Weekly would tell the world how Jesus' face had was seen on a Big Mac bun bought by someone from Des Moines with an artist's impression of the bun, how Elvis Presley was recently cited working in a burger lord in Des Moines, how listening to Elvis records cured a Des Moines housewife's cancer, how the spate of werewolves infesting the Midwest are the offspring of noble pioneer women raped by Bigfoot, and that Elvis was taken by space aliens in 1976 because he was too good for this world. Footnote, remarkably, one of these stories is indeed true. So that is a very quick look into just the sort of humor here. I also wanted to pick this for the irony that I am uh, recording this in Des Moines, uh, where I happen to live. So it was a little bit extra funny for me for that reason as well. But just silly and zany, but also with really good writing and plot. I know from some Pratchett I've read, sometimes it's just extremely absurd and there's not as much going on. I think the two of them together was the perfect combination because you really get the humor, but it's written really, really well. And everything plays in as well. 
uh, to what it's going. This is actually, there's a reason that this periodical is brought up. I'm not going to get into that specifically, but even this, even though it's mostly a throwaway joke, it continues and throughout too, they keep going back and having callbacks. Once again, almost like you're watching an, an actual sitcom TV show with callback jokes that are in there as well. It's just beautifully, beautifully crafted. Um, there are several other pieces like that in where it does have little callbacks, little pieces uh, going back to the jokes early and see, look, see, it wasn't just a joke. There was a reason that it was there. Uh, so really a lot of fun. In general, I do think that this was just a very unique take. Uh, they do a really good job as well on taking something that has been done you know, the apocalypse and even a lot of it pulls loosely from the biblical writings of what's going to happen, all the kind of talk of it. And just in the most British way, just kind of says, oh, this was what people thought. Actually, that's not the case. It's And kind of goes on creating its own history and weaving it in wonderfully in a very easy but fun way. It's uh, really just something that there's not really a whole lot like this. It was a very unique way to go about it. Um, going back to the show too, I, I do want to just one more time plug the show. Obviously, it's not like this is being sponsored or anything. I'm certainly not that important. But the, the show did such a great job. And granted, it's one book. It's not overly long. So it's not like they had to go in and cut things out or change things. But they do a really good job of just capturing the spirit of the book, the casting. Everybody was really, really good for the most part. And it, it just fit really well. There is so much more depth in the book, uh, even though it was really well done. A lot of it, just kind of the, the narration, some of that they did put in the show, but the narration, the footnotes, the style, the way it's written in general, some of the even one-liners that are in here, uh, there's just so much. It is a really honestly a fun book. I thought this would be a fun time to do this after I just finished the first Law Trilogy too, so it could not be much more different in the writing style than Abercrombie was in that but really a great book. And I don't have a lot of critiques of it. One thing I will note that was very odd and became more of a problem later on is the structure of the narrative in general, because there aren't chapters. It's divided into basically periods of time. It starts out really vague. It's in the beginning, and then it flashes forward to um, way in the future. Uh, just before the story is going to be starting, and then most of it takes place over a week. So you have a section that's called Wednesday, a section called Thursday. Now, the longest portion of the book, though, you get to Saturday, and that's when kind of everything's happening. And that section is itself at least 100 pages long, uh, I think closer to 150 or so, just in that section. So it's a little bit different uh, if you're used to reading chapters. Early on, the sections, they were a little bit shorter, and so, you know, you'd read through, you'd finish, but that chunk, obviously, you're, most people are not going to do in one sitting. Um, really, it's, it's the narrative of it being like that. I see what they were going for. It's not necessarily a bad thing, because the book does have lots of viewpoint changes or spots where you get to kind of the end of a thought. So you don't feel like you're obligated to keep going through. But I think it's one of those things that can turn people off from a book without having the general chapter structure. Heck, I remember in the last Wheel of Time book, Memory of Light, people were really mad when there was a chapter that was about that long as well, uh, which took a very long time to get through. So one of those things uh, to be prepared for if you, you read the book and you haven't, it, it does have an odd structure with the, the way that the sections are separated. But uh, honestly, it's not also, it's not like the kind of book like, I have to know what's going next. I have to keep going. It's just, it's a fun, light book. And I think if you're going to do that, if you're going to have that weird separation, doing it with a book like this does make a lot of sense for the most part as well. Now, one other thing I will mention that can be a little bit of a challenge at points is the way it's written. Very often, the accent is very, very notable because 
uh, the words, the phrases, things are written in the way that someone would actually say them. You get this with a few characters who have very thick accents, one very definitively Scottish, and you also have prophecies that are, are read out throughout, two that are written in very, very old type of speak. It's kind of a little extra thing that is interesting because you always can tell exactly how somebody is saying something, which is not something you often get in a book, um, but it can be challenging at points just trying to read and interpret sometimes what somebody is saying or what the prophecy says can be a little bit interesting because of that. So that's something I'll note. Not a huge negative. It's more of just a, another quirk of this particular story. It is just an interesting setting in general. Now, getting into a few other just specific pieces of this, once again, not really going into spoilers, but talking in general about the, the way the story is crafted. I mentioned that a little bit, but it's a really nice mix of taking real things or things that that we know we've heard about uh, bits of, you know, revelation from the Bible, other Armageddon type things that have been done, taking that and then crafting this extra fantasy into it and making it seem very original while still taking place in our world. I do usually lean a lot harder toward epic fantasy than something like this, but this story definitely does what it's intending to do, and it does it very, very well with the way that everything's crafted. There are so many just little quirks and character pieces that make it really enjoyable as well. One thing I really enjoyed was the demon Crowley, who I did absolutely picture as David Tennant the entire time. Uh, he, whenever he's trying to curse, basically, he, he doesn't want to say the word curse because he's a demon, so bad is good, you know? So he'll be correcting himself, say, this cursed, I mean, this blessed thing or, you know, what on God's earth, anything like that, he, if he starts saying a common phrase, he corrects himself to say whatever the demon appropriate one is. And it's just a, another small thing that's crafted into the persona of the character as well. And with Crowley and with Aziraphale, the angel, them talking about different things they did, taking credit for this or that, things that happened or where they were during these major world events was an interesting thing as well, talking about how all that did work out. And also uh, a fun joke, too, with Crowley, uh, who apparently, he's, when he reports back to hell, has taken credit for many a uh, terrible thing that's happened on Earth uh, with humans, even though he didn't actually have anything to do with it. And it just happens to be that humans are actually better at coming up with terrible things to do to each other than the demons in hell are, which probably true, but uh, another interesting take and look at it. Uh, with just how it was fleshed out in general. So overall, uh, very enjoyable read. The The book was very good, and there's just nothing quite like the writing style. Very fun to read. It's a, it's a lighter story, but it's, it's very good. It's not a terribly long book. It won't take you terribly long to get through. Uh, once again, watching the book and watching the show, I would recommend both. It's similar enough uh, that you could do one or the other, but I think if you're not reading the book, you're missing out. But the show is also a very fun watch as well. So this has been a little bit different uh, than some of my other reviews. With this story, as I've, I've kind of mentioned, I think just the experience of reading it, seeing the way it's written, the jokes, the the text, how all of it's done, the experience is more important than specific plot points. It's just, it's a very fun read to get through. So that's why I figured I would try it out, not really going to that vein and, and being a little bit more general for this. Uh, so if you liked that, let me know. And if you didn't, most of my other reviews go into a lot more detail. So you win either way. But uh, that is my review. Uh, if you did enjoy this review, you want to see others like it, please feel free to subscribe.